all right guys you are all welcome to this masterclass that is client's palaver and solution clients palaver and solutions well, for the sake of my foreign audience palaver in nigeria is a slang that means problem palaver means problem just like saying clients problem problems and solutions and this um, heading is um, a short training clients palaver and solution that is a short training on the professional ways to navigate client dynamics and win them for life. So welcome guys to this training, to this masterclass. It's going to be an exciting experience. I'm sure of that because the target of this masterclass is to help you guys become more professional in how you treat your clients and be able to attract more of them into your business because the more clients you have i'm talking about quality clients the more money you make because it's not all all clients that uh, can give you quality money i'm talking about quality clients in this place because if you're gathering small small clients together who don't who can't pay you will you will even prefer to have a few quality clients than to have hundreds of clients who cannot pay this time because quality clients can say, save you time save you of energy and stress can save you save you time and energy and you'll be able to have a lot of time for something else that is why quality clients are very very important than clients who can you just pay less 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 every time so the target today is for you to be able to understand how to deal with different clients because they have different set up they have different characters they have different sectors they belong to and they have different uh, characteristics they have different disposition you understand so you need to be able to manage your clients because i'm not a, 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 an advocate of designers treating their clients badly either the client is bad or is good i always believe that you should be able to handle them professionally you understand because over, over the years, over my long time in this industry, I've realized something that is always, always, um, always in vogue in, in, the, in this industry. I mean, the issue is this. Some clients are very terrible, so to say. They are very difficult. They are very terrible. But there's a way you can handle them to change them to become soft. You understand? And I've seen over time, too, that some of these clients might eventually come back later and be your best friend. That is, they can, if they cannot even pay you, they can refer you to someone who can pay your price. You get it? So our focus is actually how you can handle your clients very well without losing them. Even though they go, there's a, there's a difference between your client going and you losing them. Your client, your client may leave you now. It doesn't mean that you've lost them. You get it? It doesn't mean that you've lost them. If they go... Today, it doesn't mean that they will not come back tomorrow. But if, when you lose them, is when your client go and you lose them. That is, they will never remember your brand anymore. The only thing they can remember your brand for is for my bad treatment. So you might, you might, um, your clients might go today, they might go, and you still have them later in the future. But when you lose them, it means that they've gone for life. And that most time happens based on your character, based on your attitude towards them. So I want to believe that you guys are excited. Or well, let me ask you, are you excited to be in this masterclass? Because I have many things to unfold to you today in this masterclass. So these are the, now a lot of the reviews I got from my clients. And let me make something clear to you guys. You know, there's a place, there's a way you work for your clients and they willingly send review to you. And there's a way you go about asking them. Both are not bad. But the one I prefer mostly is me doing a particular work for my clients and they are very satisfied to the point that they offer to give me a review themselves. You understand? That's mostly what I, how I got my review. You understand? I get my review by my clients. That's what I see as my wow factor. When they, are, when they get that wow factor, they can easily go ahead and send me reviews on their own. Like this one I'm going to read to you now, right now. I didn't request for it. They just volunteered to send me reviews. Why? Because they have been enjoying my service for a long time. So he says, working with Brand Wiz Group, 
has been an ad- absolute pleasure. They are true professionals demonstrating exceptional skill in every project. The designs crafted for our brand have not only effectively conveyed our story, but have also elevated our visual, visuals to an captivating and enviable levels. The positive feedback from our members is a testament to the admir- admiration our designs re- receive. Brandwiz Group is undeniably a design pl- partner that we can rely on any time for their outstanding creativity and expertise. That this is Read to Impact. This is a brand called Read to Impact. They have been working for them and they have been sending me both their own personal review and the ones they, they want the uh, com- community are sending to them through the, the business and what they are seeing their design. This one is one of my students. He said, The truth is, I, kn- I have known about colors in design. But this book makes me realize how much I don't even know about colors. The entire book is a breath of fresh air and so deep. I will go through this book again and again, and I will recommend all designers to buy it. On the lighter note, sir, this amount is too, too small for the book, too much knowledge. And this guy went ahead to pay more than what I charged for the book. That's talking about color boss. If you have been following me for a long time, you see that I published a book recently. I tweet color balls and I will talk about it later at the end of this video. So the guy paid more than what I charged for that book. And he has been my great uh, one of the greatest fans. He has been buying, he has been buying my courses. So these are the people that trust what I do. And the last one I will use for now is the CEO of James Spread. That's Israel Peters. He said, thank you for believing in and supporting the James Spread vision. We are blessed to be your client and are grateful for the many considerations you give to us. So you know, when you when you walk to an extent where your clients are volunteering to, to give you reviews on their own, you know what it means. So I've been able to learn this over the years that clients are the one bringing in the money and they all, re, they all deserve respect. You understand? No matter how much they, they treat me or how much they speak to me or how they do anything, they deserve respect. That's my own policy anyway in brand with um, business games that's our policy designer i mean our clients are uh are to be respected yes and yes we know that clients are not always right and we have a lot of different kind of clients some are tough some are difficult and some are very very annoying but the fact is this professionally you have to learn how to manage your client very well we call it customer relationship skill you must be able to relate with them and you should be the one that will act like a professional to them. You don't, you don't follow them to be shouting or talking roughly. You don't follow them to do that. Uh, I, I had an experience recently where a woman, I was, I, I was having that deal with a woman, and she came and started wanting to be raising her voice to me, yes, based on some little other misunderstanding. And I, when I was responding to her, eventually she had to be the one that would calm down for me and be like apologizing in a way that... And she, I, I believe that she, she, she felt bad to herself that day. As I, I told her calmly, I know I brought that down calmly. I was not raising my voice with her as, as he was doing it. Okay? Because why? Some clients are going through some things at the moment. You don't know what they are going through. Maybe with their colleague at work. Maybe in their whole family uh, affair issue or whatever. Maybe someone that's just offending them. You understand? They will just pass aggression down to you. And if you're not smart... You will just as well follow them to do those things and you will lose them eventually. But when you show to them that you understand and you are calm and you're professional and the way you treat them, what happens is that you will win their heart eventually. So that is just for that. So welcome on board to this um, masterclass, Clients Palava and Solutions. Who is this course for? But one aspiring designer who wants to break B in the industry and and make lasting mark is meant for women that want to break big in this industry and make lasting mark. Also, is for freelancer designer who is looking forward to attracting more clients and make more money. It's also meant for a struggling designer who has issue attracting and retaining clients and many more. And if you feel that you have temper issue, you have you have a um, temper issue. You cannot control yourself when anything uh, trigger when something triggers you. 
this course is going to help you to manage your psychological uh, domain because it's very, very important for you to be able to manage your um, psychological reaction so that you will not lose your clients. Yeah, let me say a little about me. Who am I? I'll just briefly tell you a little about me because I want to manage space for this training. I bit about me. I'm Simeon Michael, a brand designer and a trainer. I'm a born trainer, I'm a gifted trainer. Um, it's my food. I love to do it very, very well. They've been following me for a long time. You know that I love to teach people what I know, my experiences, what I've seen working in the industry, and many more. I have courses to my name. I have courses. In, I will talk about them later at the end of this video, and I have some things for you at the end of this video. So I want you to watch this course to the very end. I am Simon Michael. I have two kids. I have my wife. And we're fine. We stand. And this design, um, this, this design business has been helping me all my life. It has been helping me. I've had some ups and downs. I've had some challenges. I've had some regrets I had. I made with my clients in the past. You know, the way I treated them, the way I... See, I've lost clients before. I've lost clients before and I'm going there right now. My design, let me just start... Let me continue with I by talking about my design journey first. My design journey started some... I think I'm going to like 20, close to 20 years now in this industry. So I've gathered a lot of experiences from different angles, different sectors. You know, it has been a kind of ups and down experience. I began the journey with the Corel Draw. Uh, then I started with Corel Draw. Then, as the only tool I was having access to, and when I when I learned about Photoshop years after, I realized that I'd be missing out. So because before that time, my the mentality was that Photoshop is only meant for photo editing. That was the mentality we usually have then. So when I started um, learning Photoshop, I realized that it is beyond that. It's more, more than photo editing. There are many more things you can do with Photoshop. You understand? So I started learning about Adobe products. I started learning about it. So from then, I don't Corel Draw for life. And I don't use it again. So I stopped using Corel Draw. And this is not a kind of a troll on. People who, use, who still use Corel Draw, I'm not saying that. I'm not condemning Corel Draw. I'm not saying it's bad. I've only said my own experience. I felt that I enjoyed working with um, the Adobe product than to be using Corel Draw. And I want to believe that if you are still here using Corel Draw, if you try it by yourself, you will attest to it. And let me even add to it that by saying that if you go to top agencies to work with them, I've been to some of them before where I worked, I worked under them. I realized that the, the industrial demand for design is not Corel Draw. Nobody will ask for Corel Draw. If you go for interview, if you want to work there, everything is Adobe product that we talked about because that's that's the standard industrial demand you get. So Corel Draw is not something you should rely on. I mean rest yourself on for life without trying something else. You can just try something else. It's not bad for you to try test something else. You understand? I'm not saying Corel Draw is bad. You guys should not, should not get me wrong. You understand? Anything you know, the major thing that matters mostly in design is your output. Your tool doesn't matter sometimes, but the output is what really, really matters. But nevertheless, we can't put that in place of industrial demand when it comes to design. And that goes to Adobe products. You can just try and check it out to see how it works. So I started using Korea in Photoshop and I've been rolling from there. I've been good. I've worked with different agencies. I, I've worked with uh, companies with ministries means different places both in nigeria and outside nigeria and i've been able to learn a lot of things a lot of things along the line okay so i've been able to learn a lot of things i've learned to be patient too patient because these are you know, one of the qualities that people don't have these days is you are patient and it's very very important that you are patient so that you not uh, run up out of your own time so talking about my experience with clients my experience with clients has been so so awesome because one of the things I found the foundation of my knowledge today and my skill, and now I've been able to get a lot of clients and work with many of them, is my lesson. The lesson I've learned from the previous client I have. Because as I said earlier, I've lost many clients before. Why? Because I would just react to them. I would just respond. See, there was a day I was talking to my clients. I was shouting. I was talking to my I was I was fighting someone on phone. Yes, and after I finished the call, I regretted my action. When I started thinking about it, yes, and I started thinking about it, and I felt that I didn't do well. 
you get it. So I just started learning about how to inter- inter- relate with clients, how to manage them, and all the rest like that. And today, no matter how tough the client is, if you are able abusing me, you get it, I've been able to I've get to the point whereby I will just mellow down and be looking at you. Why? Because I have been understanding about that how this thing works. Some clients who are terrible today are the ones that might help you tomorrow. They might refer you to someone else tomorrow. And you can also be an agent of change to them. You can influence a kind of a change in them. You understand? By acting right. You know, they say two wrongs cannot make a right. I, I don't know how they say that statement very well. Two wrongs cannot make a right. Yes. You know, if you are if they're angry and you are angry too, you guys exchange the words. Now, uh, let me ask you, what will be the benefit of the whole thing? Who will win? As in, how would they add to your big brand or business? How would they benefit your brand? You should ask yourself all these questions because when people go out there, they will just say things that benefit their own ego, that will benefit their own view. You understand? So imagine them talking about your brand to someone else and are saying it in a bad light. They will not even say that they are the one who will trigger the whole thing that happened. You get it? So you will be the one that will lose at the end. So I've been able to learn all these things over the years and I've concluded that no matter what, I will learn how to manage my clients very well. And it has been helping me over the years. Some people will come to me with all these advanced blows, all these very tough approach. But then they interact with me with few time. What happened is that I will win of the, them over. It has been helping me, it has been working for me. And I, that's how I'll be getting my clients different, at different places at different times. You get it? And my transformation, my transformation came when I discovered that this design thing is something I have something to do about. When I discovered that I have something to do in this line of design, I started taking it serious. And I know that I have some uniqueness as a person. I have some uniqueness because I have a I have art background. I studied art in school. It's time. So I've been able to incorporate my art uh, creativity. Um, skill or creative skill, I've been able to incorporate it to what I do in design, and I don't like to to follow the way people are going in design. I always like to be unique. I always like to do something differently. I all I don't I don't take a no for an answer. I don't take anything goes for an answer. I always believe that there is more. There is more. If you're if you're really close to me, that I can push people very very well. I don't get satisfied easily. So I've been able to craft that idea, that that's, that's, that's system. I've incorporated it to my brand as a policy, as, as a as a unique uh, proposition in my business. You get it. So I, I I put that together as a way of distincting myself from or distinguishing myself from others. You get it. And I've been hearing a lot of feedback from this that people, whenever people see my work, that this guy has a hand in this work. Or sometimes when I even post some, maybe I get some. Programs I I want to attend, maybe from my church or any other place. I put on my on my status. You just see myself you just slide into my DM and say that sir, this is not your design. I say yes, it's not my design. I just posted it because I'm going to attend the program or maybe it's my church program. You see, so what that thing gives me is my one it gives me joy that yes, my style is unique and people are already getting to use getting used to my style. So it's a very big deal for me, and I really appreciate that. So that's for that. And coming to my goal for this course is simple. My goal for this course is that I want you to become more professional in how you deal with your clients, no matter how tough they are. You know, when you get when you are able to deal with them professionally, you can easily win their hearts and get them to your side. That means the more clients you get, the more money you make, the more referrals you can get, and the more reviews you get. Because when you get to those things. Your, your brand because you are being a brand you are being a brand don't forget that you are being a brand and your branding is simply about people's experience when they come to deal with you maybe your service or your product when they come to you, what is their experience that is branding anything they can say their experience is is your branding your side is your brand that's what talks about your brand so I want the, the goal is that you should be able to uh, get more clients you're able to be able to deal with them professionally and convert them to become paying clients because you getting a client doesn't mean that they're already automatically becoming paying clients. You're able to, able to convert them to becoming paying clients. And when you have paying clients who are consistent, what happens? Zero. Money goes up. That's it. So that's just about that. So 
I'll, before we go to what we have fully, let me quickly tell you this thing very quickly that eliminates the falling from your mind. But one, eliminate inferiority complex is very, very dangerous. People will perceive it in you. If you have it in you, your client will perceive it and they will know that something is wrong with this guy. He doesn't have confidence. Timidity and shyness remove it from you completely. Learn how to remove these things from you as a designer. Also, desperation. Even though you are hungry, even though you have not eaten that day, don't show to your client that you are desperate. If you show it to them, they will take advantage of you. That yes, anything you tell him, he will accept. And to be sincere with you, you would want to accept really when you are desperate. Because your own target is make a, make a just get money chop and just go. Of which, if you're a busy business, it is not a good approach. If you're a busy business, even though you are hungry, you must still act professionally, like stand your ground and let them know that this is how much this will go for, and don't be desperate. And lastly, don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant because if you're arrogant, it will chase them away, and that's one of the areas I want to target in this course today. And I want to, I, I want to hope that you will get this clearly. And let me even sound this to you before we continue. This might take a long time. At least this, this masterclass should be like an hour or less, or maybe an hour plus, but it can be up to two hours. I know that. So because it's just, just going to be a straight course. So I want to advise you that you watch it to the very end. But what, what really build you to a very large extent in your career, what will really help you very well in your career, you should be able to give you time to learn. Yes. That's why I don't want to rush out this course and omit some important points. I want you to learn. I want to be as uh, comprehensive as possible and also as detailed as possible, as detailed as possible, and as well concise as possible. So I want to bring all this together so that it will not take more time and we get everything clearly. So getting rid of those bad factors helped me in my journey very, very well. See, I've fallen into many of them before. And when there are some clients that you see, when you see their status, when you see them, you'll be like, wow. You'll be like, wow, how would I deal with this one? You understand? But when you are confident as a designer, no matter how, we, how rich your clients are, you'll be able to interact with them freely. I Personally, I interact with my clients as if we've known for a long time as friends. I, I try to bring that to the place of like friend. You get it? That's, that's how far I've learned this thing. And it's helping me very, very well. So the direct consequence of, of ignoring those factors are one, your client will perceive it. If you're not confident, if you're shy, if you're timid, if they will perceive it. And if you're desperate, they will perceive it from you and run you down with it. They won't take you serious if, you, if your, your confidence or packaging doesn't fit your charges. Yes, you're charging very high, but you don't look like it. You don't sound like it. Your packaging doesn't sound like it. Your brand doesn't look like it. You know, it doesn't make sense. They will not even take you serious. You think that you're just a desperate guy who just wants to get money and just go. So let your your packaging, your confidence, everything match your what? Match what you are what you are putting out as your price. And last point there is they will get the driver's seat. And when they get the driver's seat, what happens to you? They control the narrative. They control everything for you. Everything just eventually is that you just succumb to whatever they are pushing for. And that's that's it. You lose you just lose the whole uh, benefit of the whole thing you're supposed to get. So they will pay you less and you will not be able to get everything you're supposed to get from that deal. You have to be very smart and be confident. So your content or branding outputs have a say on your client perception. You go to my client, my, my page for instance, you see that I maintain something consistent. My color, the feel of my page. Because why? These things are very, very important. How you brand your Business, how you brand your package, your things, as they say, it have a start say on what, how they will approach you and how they will perceive your value or your quality. Get yeah, this is very, very important because if you don't get it right, your client will perceive it right wrongly and might not even like to deal with you. Because people of high class don't want to deal with low class brands. You get it? That's why people of high class can go ahead to pay very huge for whatever service you are rendering to them. It's time. Why? Because they want class. They want to be seen with class. They want to be dealing with class. So if you're targeting a kind of high class client, you need to brand your, your, your product or your service or your company in a very high, good way. Don't just re relate with them anyhow. 
they ask you ask you for your price you just type it on your whatsapp or through text or by just through your voice just send them the, the price they don't start negotiating price as if you are pricing fish in the market no you should be able to create what we call rate cards that when they ask you for your price list you just uh, you just send them your rate card so you just send it to them right there if you don't know how to do rate cards go to my youtube page that's brand with i mean brand with group tv or youtube you will search for it how to prepare a rate card i have it on that platform on my youtube platform brand with group tv you stand on youtube just type how to prepare a rate card that you see there i talked about how to do it there so you should be able to present it to them not by just typing the uh, price or by just telling them the price of on phone or physically no tell them that you want to give and you set up your rate card they will see it so if they even have something else in mind that of approach you when they see those packages like that it they will change their mind i've seen this happen several times in my brand too clients having something in mind when they see my rate card they change their mind and they flow with it some of them don't flow with negotiate but that doesn't mean that i cannot negotiate price but it's not be the same way they, they are expecting before you get it their negotiation now will not will not be too much just a little but i can't tell you that, that i can't tell you now for example that that my service for particular maybe logo design is story thousand era. You now want to be charging say yeah, oh God, please let me bring it down. You're now telling me that fifty thousand era. Does it make sense? From two hundred thousand era to fifty thousand era. Does it make sense? And some of you will just go ahead and accept because it's fifty K. You just accept how much is fifty K? You just accept it like that. No, it doesn't make sense. Now someone like me now if someone like that if someone comes to me and say okay let me beat down my price the least I can go is like one eighty. I just remove 180k from I mean if I remove 20k from the price, it's okay. 180k. That is still fair. It's still okay. Yeah. And even if the watch comes to be, say 150k, which I cannot even go because to me it's too much. But we're not saying that 100,000 naira or 50k is is ridiculous. It just tells them that you don't even know what you are doing. It tells them that you don't even value your time, your effort. But most time people, because it's gonna be an e version of all the works. You're not going to spend money on printing or anything. Everything you're just sending it to, sending it to your client is just e version. You just feel that it doesn't cost you anything and you just charge less like that. No, it doesn't work that way. Why? Because you've taken your time to learn about how to develop your skill. You've spent money on that. You've bought your system. You didn't get it free of charge. I mean, other factors like that. And also, ultimately, your time. Your time. How do you price your time? So by the time you send them all these things like this now, you can be sure that they will approach you in a professional way because everything around you shows professionalism. So let's get to the real deal. I just try to rush up that, sec that section so that I will get to the main thing on time. And this one now, I will try and slow down a bit so that I won't get the whole thing to you. And I want to make sure to tell you that this might take a, a bit of time, but I think it is, uh, it's worth it worth it but we want something that will help your brand that will improve you that will increase your revenue that will take you to a, the next level requires your time and think it deserves the time it's time so i'm going to take a bit of time here because i will slow down a bit on this aspect you get i want you guys to get the whole point rightly and let it be practical don't just watch it or listen to it and just go no i want it to be practical so part one is client palaver. I will just take all the problems here, emphasize on the problems, and see them very, very clearly. Then part two will be how to provide solution to those problems. Yes, and this is very, very important for you to understand because if you don't understand the problems first, how do you want to solve the problem you don't understand? It's going to be very, very hard. So take your time and let's dive into it. So the first thing I would like to do is to let you know what is client. Uh, who are your clients? Your clients are different set of people or body with different interests who need your service. Different set of people or body, different interests who need your service. Now, I want to emphasize on a word I use in this definition here, and that is the word different. Different. So I've seen I've seen many people treating their clients the same way, and it's an error. Why? Because your clients can never be the same, and you can never treat your client the same way and win their heart. No, some clients are very tough yet to deal with. They are very tough. 
So when you are dealing with clients that are not tough, you cannot have, you cannot approach clients that are tough the same way. It's not going to work. Why? Because they are not the same. You have clients from different sector, different uh, families, different environments. You understand? Different mentality, different uh, industry. Differences are everywhere. Differences everywhere. So when they come to meet you, you can't be treated the same way because why? It might not work because the approach you use for this one might not work for this one because of the differences they have. They are all human beings. Even though they are, even though it's company or an industry or whatever, those industries are still represented by human beings. You get it? Human beings will have emotions, will have feelings. It's really helped you to really know how to treat them, how to interact with them, and how to approach them professionally because the place of differences is the key part on how to deal with humans. Just like, for instance, if you're a teacher, if you're a school teacher, for instance, you can't deal with your students or your pupils the same way because there, there's what we call individual differences. Individual differences must be respected when it comes to business, when it comes to branding, when it comes to design. You must respect them when you're dealing with your clients. Because why? It's a sign of respect, it's a sign of professionalism. And it will really help you to go far when you are dealing with people. Yeah, let me quickly read through the breakdown of what we are going to be looking at in this um, masterclass. Number one, vague or unclear project briefs, dubious demand, miscommunication, tight deadlines, budget constraints, indecisiveness, designers' ill approach, unhealthy comparison. Belittling designers' efforts slash profession, and lastly, difficulty communicating design choices. These are the things we're going to be looking at in depth. Because if you can highlight the problems, you can easily get the solutions. So let's get into it. So the first one is vague or unclear project briefs. I want you guys to know that. Based on my experience in this industry over the years, I've seen clients that will come to meet me and say, I want to design a logo. No me, I specialize in logo and branding. That's my area. I do other things, but this is my main focus that I want to be known with and my training. I can't see, I can't live training my life. It is my food, this is my life, this is my calling. I love training. I've, I love training so much. So that's why. I can't, I can't leave training, anything training. It is my calling. You get it. So that's why I put it branding, logo design, and branding. Just branding and training. Understand? So, what I'm trying to say is that uh, this, many of them have been doing that before. But when I learned my lesson, I, I, I don't allow that anymore. So, you just sent me the name of the brand. I want to design a logo, blah, 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 like that. That's, that's all. So I would send my, I would send my questionnaire to them. That please, I want you to uh, you need to refill this and send it back to me, so I can get much as much details I can get from you to run with as it is uh, uh, for the project. But many of them maybe they are busy or they are lazy. I, don't, I can't even say. I don't, I don't even know the problem that these people are facing. You'll be like, okay, just go ahead and do anything. Just go ahead and do it. So this woman, that, that, that thing happened to me some years ago when I was still very young as a designer. This man sent me the name. I said that I want you to help me do this logo. So as someone that didn't have much experience, I just jumped, I jumped at it. I designed a lot of sketch, a lot of... Then, then I was not even sketching. Then I would go to my computer and start crafting logo. Crafting logo everywhere. I did the, plenty of them. I sent this this woman. You know what shocked me? He said, none of it, none of it look like what I want. She doesn't like any of them. I said, what do you as in if I if I started learning to ask her, what do you want? What do you want it to be like? You no, know, I would I went again, I did it. I did different things again. Wasting my time, body my time, body my energy, everything. Eventually, we couldn't conclude. Why? Because I was just working without any brief. I was just working without any brief. And this is very, very tough, terrible. This is very, very terrible. I'm te you see, if you think you are you are you are a machine that you are smart, that you can deal with things like this easily without needing brief, just go ahead and try it. 
just go ahead and try it. I said I was frustrated. I mean, frustrated, like frustrated. No way you are. You just, you just see, you just pick your car. You just stand up in your in your house. Just pick your pick your car, and you're just driving without any destination in view. Or in mind, you just going like that. Just you are just going like that without having any place in mind. You want to visit. Just driving around this around the town. That's how it looks like. No target. No destination. No 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 goal. Nothing. Just, just say go and just go and design anything. So their their mindset is like, you, this logo is just a simple thing that it can be done. This is not about logo alone. It goes across every other aspect of design. Every other aspect of design. They just believe that it's just about you just putting lines together, putting colors together, and making something beautiful out of it. No. So when I when I I dealt with many of them like that, I would, I would waste time, waste hours, waste energy, waste my fuel. In order to waste everything, eventually they will see that they've, they've not seen what they're looking for. You get it? And I now learned about brief, questionnaire and brief. I now crafted my own. I now to them, I say, if I cannot get at least 85 or 90% response to my to the questionnaire I sent, I will not lay my hand on this work to do. I will not. Why? Because... That thing that you are struggling to spend days working on or hours, if you have your brief on ground, it will save you of those stress. I'm telling you the fact. You will not need to spend those hours, those energies on that anymore. Because why? Because there's, there's direction. You only just interpret the brief to elements and make something, something expressive from it, something meaningful, something functional. Get your ideas, get your your your, your uh, strategies together, put everything together, you see that everything will work out fine for you. Why? Because there is a target, there's a goal, there is a guide that you that is you are, you are following. See, I'll i I will tell you for for free that every work I've done in my life that I've not gotten enough brief have never been easy for me. I, I will tell you for free. Every work I've done in my life as a designer that I've not gotten a brief for. I just go ahead and just do it. I've struggled with them than the ones I got with. There's, a, there's an agent, agency I work with. We have a slang. The slang is give the full gist. Give, always give the full gist. If you're in that company, what it means is that always give the detail of this work. Share the detail. Give, give us a full brief of this work to save you time. So that's. So when you when you have this, you know it's a it's a big problem. See, I'm telling you, I'm taking my time on this one because see, I can tell you for free that this is a big deal. I'm telling you, it's a big deal. It's a big problem. So when you have unclear project brief, so when you have vague or unclear project brief, it's a big deal. Another problem I've seen. Now, what we're going to be looking at in this is dubious demand. See, there are those corny guys. There, has, there are those corny clients who don't want to pay for five works. They want to pay for two works and get five works. I'm telling you. They don't want to pay for five works. They, they want five works, but they want to pay for only two works. I've seen this as a problem in the industry because it, it's like you making a fool of me. You want to make me like a fool, like see me as a fool. Because why Why will you have intention of having five works and you are projecting two works as what you are looking for? I don't know if you guys have experienced this before. Understand? Those clients, they will just want to be dubious. They will be doing as if they are rejecting a particular design. They don't reject it though. They just want you to get more for them. They will be do as they will act as if they are rejecting that work. No. If you not make a mistake and send them original file of that work that they reject, they rejected in the first place, and you now want to design on that one, they will still use that work. They will still use it. So these people like this are dubious. They they are very dubious and cunning. They are crafty. They want to they want to play you. So there's another problem I've seen in the industry. Another one I've seen is miscommunication. It's very very also key in this industry. When your client is saying that they want they want uh they want a and you are thinking that they're talking about v that sounds 
upside down. You get it? So it's a problem. Or maybe they are thinking about nine, and you are thinking about six. No, it looks like the same shape. But if you turn one upside down, it will give you another meaning. So when you don't communicate, when there is no communication between you and your client very well, you don't communicate your need, the need is not well communicated, the brief is not well communicated to you, or the channel of communication is not flowing very well, it will be a, it's a big problem. Imagine you are taking your time, you have taken days on a project, and you are already feeling happy that you are getting through, you are already running up with this, this project. I always for you to hear that everything you've done is a waste of time, that is not what is required, is not what is needed. How will you feel about it? It's a communication issue, communication gap. It's a big deal in the industry. And when you get stuck into this one, how do you want to move forward in that project? It's a big deal. So that problem, problem I've seen is miscommunication of ideas, miscommunication of budgeting, miscommunication of, of reviews, miscommunication of needs, design needs, miscommunication of client want or interest. This communication of client idea, even designers sometimes how they communicate their ideas to their clients is very, very hard to understand. Yeah, so it's another big deal that we see in the industry that is really, really a problem. At that point is tight deadlines. And I will take a bit of time in this one because I've seen a lot of clients lying about this area. Some clients will need a particular work by, let me say, in seven days time, seven days time. And they will tell you that this work we are sending to you today, we want it by 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Of which the original time they need that work is in seven days' time. So when this deadline is given to you and you accept it like that, forgetting that you have another work on ground to attend to, some clients are expecting to deliver some works maybe in two days' time or the following day. But because of your desperation, you fall for that tight deadline. It's a big deal. Many clients do that because they want to just ensure that they have the work at time on time, that they will not be run up and down. It's fine, you understand. But that doesn't mean that you can, they cannot give you three days or two days on that work. It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that they cannot do give you two days or three days. Because the more time they give you, the better the work will be. And you can have enough time to ideate, think about how to go about the work. So this is another, time, another issue I've seen in the industry. Clients lying about the deadline of the work. When the work can still have be given more time. I will even let me quickly share my experience. Uh, one of the experiences I have in my in the um agency I worked with. And this thing, this thing happens every time when I was in that agency. And I, I, I used to tell them in, uh, during our board meetings, I used to, I used to tell them I said, let us educate our client. Let us not accept tight deadlines like that from our clients. Why? Because I believe that as, as a company, as a brand, you, sh you should be able to have some measure of control over some project's timeline. Some measure of control over some project's demand. You get it? Why? Because you don't only serve them. You serve other, other business too, other, other clients too. So if you don't have enough time for their work, is it that you are going to drop other people's work for their work or you you just shuffle yourself anyhow and produce anything anyhow they would bring work and say okay we are bringing this work in the morning they give you the work by 9 a.m for instance when you start your work for that day 9 a.m the nice thing they will tell you is that by 12 noon today that's same that's like that's like three hours or two hours time we are coming for this work i'll be like you just gave me one work right now that i've not not like but like five minutes ago or so, or maybe the previous day you have given me work that I need to start with today. Then you are bringing this one and say, by twelve you want to have it. You get why you are still thinking about the one you have on ground, and that one has come and they are giving you that you must bring make sure that it's available by twelve. That means you have like two hours, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like three hours to sort the work out. In that space of three hours. You might have like completed works, like three or four completed works. This one has to be demanding. This one has to be demanding. Now, you know what pains me with this that I said? I've been telling these guys they don't want to listen, and eventually it's, it's happening. But if I go to that agency, I've, I've had experience before, you understand? So eventually, they will now, after they have you rush up the work, do everything, 
realize that the following day, they are bringing the work back to you. That work might stay like a week in that company. Might, might stay like a week in that company before eventually we finalize everything. And that's the same work they're telling us that by tomorrow, by so time tomorrow morning, they are using the work. And a week's time, I mean a week's time, is still in that company. Life follow on uh, my, maybe project manager's table or desk. You get it? It's still there. And they were pressurizing you that tomorrow morning by 9 a.m., this work will be used. And for each seven days' time, the work is still, or five days' time, the work is still in that company. So you see now that people are just trying to, people are just trying to uh, put pressure because of their own end. Too. They don't want to consider that designers need time. But designers are always at the receiving end of everything. I'm telling you. Go and ask anybody or any, 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 any agency, brand agency or design agency. Go and ask anybody. The designers are always at the receiving end, everywhere. So I'll tell those guys that see, let guys, let us give our clients realistic time timelines. These guys are just buying time for themselves. This work needs time to be done. Some of them would stay long with a uh, with a uh, brand manager, and when it's about to be submitted, they will now run to designers. Come on, do rush work. Why can't they release the work on time so that we can have an, a very beautiful outcome and they have time to design? So these things are very tricky. So it's a big deal, big deal, and and so not something I've seen really, really happily in the industry. Another thing is, so before I go to the budget constraint in that area of timeline, if you know that it's not, you know, it's not good for you, the timeline is not good for you. Please don't accept the work. Don't accept the work because if you accept it, it's going to have a dent on your your brand. Don't accept it because accepting it means that you have to do it. That's just a fact. You have to do it. Another point is budget constraints that I've seen. So people won't like good work, but they don't want to pay. And I will still tell you again from experience that you are accepting to beat down your price. We still bite you eventually if you, don't, if you are not careful. I've seen myself before try to consider a particular client. After finishing considering the client, I still eventually use my own money to do the work. Without me having right to ask for more money, I bid down my price, try to be considerate because the person came with a sweet mouth. Uh, they, you know, they play. There's they, they a way a client, your client will play their emotional game. So there's a way they play the emotional game on you, and you fall for it. Then after they now finish successfully, they've done that. You have agreed the price. You now see another side of the client. Now acting as like the boss, making demands. You get it. Eventually, I will now use my own money to complete the work. Because why? The price I was thinking that I will finish the work is not realistic anymore. You understand? It's a big deal. Some of them have the money, but they, don't, they just believe that design wasn't worth it. They have the money, but they just believe that design doesn't worth it. They just believe that design, design should be the one, the cheapest on the list of things. So they will not treat it like that. So when, they know, when you now agree with them, the price, you will not bring out another set of them that will be demanding and be acting like the boss. And you have no right to go and ask them for more money. So this is another big deal that I've seen in the design industry. And you as a designer, you, are, you must have the skill of pricing. I have the skill of pricing. How to price. These are the things I taught, things I taught extensively in my course with the designer. See, that course is... It's an exclusive course. I will talk about that later at the end of this course. Another thing I've seen is indecisiveness. Indecisiveness. Some clients will just have an idea and pass. They just have the ideas like that and they just run down to the designer and just send you the work, just design. Of which they have not fine to the idea. They have not completed on the idea. They have not even fleshed out the whole idea. They just run straight to the designer. So after you have finished, you have gone in like a day Almost finishing the work. Or maybe you have even you have even done with the work. Sending them uh, to check check for review. They will now bring corrections, adjustments, additional things to you. You going back, you will not be as if you are redesigning the work from the beginning. You get so it means that they have not decided on what they want to do, or they have not completed their ideas before they now send to you. You will not be going back and forth. 
and design has to do with structuring you have your eye design project you want to do you have to structure out how the design will be everything the elements how you distribute them now the problem is this when you don't bring these new things to be added to the design the world and remove no that will now be like you not to have to re redo or restructure the whole thing like you are redesigning everything and it's a big problem so these are the things that are big deal in the industry. Your clients have not completed on their ideas. They are just running to you. Only for them to be reviewing, reviewing, reviewing every now and then. There was a brand that I worked with that time when I was in that agency. A particular brand on that working with us. I hate, I hated, I hated that brand. Like, I too much hate them. One work might take plenty of reviews. Plenty of inconclusive reviews everywhere. The first one, after they have Send the work to them. The first person will first check it. Send our own review. They will not send it to another boss above that person. The person will check it also. Send their own review. If not, that person will now send it to another boss above the person. Like five levels of bosses like that. Imagine you have working on the same <laughs> for like five or six levels of bosses ahead of the person that sent the work. Until you not get to the last final one, which might still be going back to the first idea. So it's a big deal that is really affecting many people in the industry. Another thing is designers' ill approach. And this one goes to you as a designer. And I was talking about something like that earlier in this uh, course, that no matter what anybody does to you, no matter how much they trigger you, don't approach your client anyhow. It's a platform I go to on Facebook uh, on Facebook, uh, it's a popular platform for designers. I will not mention the name. You see, when I go to that platform, you see the arrogance of designers. You see arrogance. You see how they talk about, how they treat clients. How I said these people don't know the business of design. And the fact is that people hear your attitude toward the client doesn't mean that it's right. They hear you, they praise you, but how you treated the client doesn't mean that you were, you were right. You not, they will not even bring the screenshot of the, the conversation on how the whole thing went. And start laughing, testing the person, all those things like that. I just feel that it's not a professional way of doing working as a designer. If I employ somebody and you you do like that, I will sack the person straight. I will fire you. Why? Because it doesn't show you're a professional. You get it? it doesn't show you're a professional. No matter what, as a designer, act professionally every time. Do not do not make your client feel bad. Even though you are, they are angry, they are shouting, all those things like that, you must learn to work, to treat them with respect and respond in a respectful way. You must respond respect, in a respectful way. Don't respond the way they are responding. You are the professional here. You are the professional here. Don't make them trigger you to misbehave as a professional designer. No, don't treat your client bad. No matter what happens, if if we are even going to wave them goodbye, do it politely, because the goodbye of today doesn't mean that it's already end for you forever. The goodbye of today might bring a huge welcome tomorrow, if you don't shut the door behind them. But if you are saying goodbye to them and you are making it like abusing them, treating them badly. You have, not, you, have not even, you have not even started learning about business then. Because in business, man, you're going to say a lot of things. If you are going to discard your client, do it in a polite way and in a very respectful way that they will even be willing to come back to you later, later in the future. Because why? Nobody knows tomorrow. That client you are discarding today might be the one that will refer you to your, to your big break tomorrow. They might not be able to pay your, uh, your, your price but they might be the one that will refer you to that, that one that will give your big business the breakthrough of its life tomorrow. So don't shut the door behind you, behind them when they are leaving. Treat them well and don't allow people's praise because they're going to post the issue and they will praise you. Don't allow it to, to trigger you to not be misbehaving. No. On healthy comparison too, you know, some sometimes we will tell you and say, I have my cousin, my cousin, I think that's, I, put, I had a post on my page recently, that was something like this. They said my cousin can even, can even design, but I just decided to just come to you. Some will say I, I even designed, I even use Canva to design. I don't know, I, I, I don't have time. 
what you kind of talk like that there was a guy that I used to do that into me that time those years yeah i would say that i have my i have designers on my street that will be calling me bros 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 bring your work now let me more design for you he did it the first time i didn't say anything i i did, I, I just looked at him again he came again and said that same thing i said bro I would not like you to say this kind of thing again. Why? Because I'm not the, those guys on your street. I said, I'm not those guys on your street. I was not making, I was not shouting. I just told him politely, say, bro, I'm sorry. You have not, I'm not those guys on your street. Don't tell me this again because we are running a business and the policy we use in our businesses are not the same. If I'm charging 100K or I'm charging 100K for my, my, my service and someone else is out there charging 5K, that's how it works for them. Just stand. So those comparisons, and when I, after that, the guy didn't mention that thing again like that. Why? Because you can't be comparing people like that. And you think that you are saying... Because well, some of them are targeting something. They are trying to belittle you. Which I'm going to talk about, I think, the next point. They're trying to belittle your effort. Belittle your, your profession. Make you look as if you don't want that price. They are playing game on you. It's a problem. Unhealthy comparison. If your cousin can do it, why can't the cousin fix it for you? If you have a friend who can do it, why can't they do it for you? All these things matter a lot. Another problem we see is, I've mentioned part of it, belittling designers' effort or profession. They try to belittle you. Think, I have Canva. I even have laptop in my house. I just feel I don't have time. I just Let me just help you. I just, let me just give you something so I can just design this for you. Bro, I'm not begging. I'm not begging. If you cannot pay my price, I'm sorry. I can't fix it. I wish I could. That's what, that's what I used to tell me. I say, I say, I really wish I could help. You know, I, you know, it sounds polite. Of which I'm trying to tell that I cannot do it. But I say, I, say, I really wish I could help with that price, but it's not going to work for me. It's, 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 it won't work for us like that. It's time. And that will be the end. So because me, I already vowed that nobody will belittle my profession. I don't even position myself to the point that someone will It's not possible. That was years, years ago. That, that, that issue of belittling you know, or the declaim, it don't post, no, it's not possible again. That's why you see me crying out every time on my platform that designers should at least pack it themselves. Put yourself on a particular ground that people will respect you. You're not hungry. Even though you're hungry, you should be able to be mature to carry yourself. Give yourself a good courage so they will respect whatever you are offering as a value. Some people will want to belittle your profession and make it look as if you are not, it's nothing. And the last point is difficulty, difficulty communicating design choices. Yeah, there are some clients that have heaven and earth in their head. They want heaven and earth in that design. They want every, but to, to communicate it is an issue. It's a big deal. To tell you exactly what they want is a big deal. And also conflicting factor in this place is that when designers want to design to suit themselves and present to their client, to, to force their client to take it, it is wrong. You're not, you're not designing for yourself. They're designing for your client's client. They're designing for your client client. They're just a middleman that, that's helped your client get his or a message to the heart of their client. You get you are the middleman that helps your client who came to meet you to get their message to the heart of their potential client out there. That's 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 your role as a designer. So your work is to be able to understand how to merge, how to Navigate yourself between them and achieve the purpose. So, I should have, when, when your clients come to you and say they have some idea, I sure you get that idea clearly before you embark on the journey. So, part B, straight away, let us look at relevant solutions that will help all these things I've listed. I'm still going to manage them together, the problem, and then below, I'll tell you the solution that will really help. So, I want, before I go to that solution, let me make something clear again about the issue of differences, right? Clients are of different makings and sectors. While we have the good ones, we also have the difficult ones. How are you supposed to handle the difficult or indecisive client? Let's look at that in the next, in the following slide. Relevant solutions. Number one, vague and unclear project brief solution. Establish a thorough onboarding process that includes detailed client brief and questionnaires to extract essential project details. Encourage clients to provide visual references if possible and example to clarify 
their expectations. If your clients say they have something in mind, they can give you they can give you sample or previous work that is in that line or something that can express their heart to you clearly. You should go ahead and do it. But what I'm trying to say in this place is that get your brief clearly. Let the brief be clear. Let the detail of the work be clear. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. When your brief is clear, as I told you earlier, I said when I was talking about the problem, I said all the works I've done in this my life without brief and without brief or concrete brief, I've even want the one that I've struggled with in my life than any other one. All of them I've struggled with them. All of them. Just design without any any brief. It's very, very hard. Yes, ten. So you need to understand that this thing matters a lot. It matters. So get make sure you do everything possible you can to get brief from your client before the work is done. Before you even put your hand on the work, make sure you get a concrete brief from your client to avoid back and forth. Dubious demand. Clearly define the project scope in writing, outlining deliverables, timelines, and divisions. Implement a change request, request process for any additional work beyond the agreed scope, including discussions on potential impact on timelines and budget. You know, this place is saying that if your clients are coming with a dubious demand, like just as like I said, that they pay for two words, they are spending five works, let there be a written document, a written agreement there. Okay, this is the number of work you want to get, this is the deliverables, these the timelines we, have, we agreed on. If it's even a phone call thing, make sure you record the call. Record it. When you record your call, it saves you a lot of stress. Because when they are going to add to it, let me know that see, this thing will have an impact on the budget. That's increasing the price you already have before. And the timeline. Because if they are now demanded for five instead of two, then the price will increase. And the timeline for the for, for submission will also increase. That's what they're placing. So when you have related documents clearly stated on ground, there will not be any issue of back and forth because some people can lie. I tell you that no, that's not that's what they agree. But when they see everything written down, if it's even like, like a chat on WhatsApp, screenshot that thing as an evidence. And they want to be arguing with you, send them the screenshot, and that will settle the whole thing. This time. So the next point is miscommunication solution. Foster open communication channels. Regular, regularly check in with clients, seek clarification and ambiguous feedback, and ambiguous feedback, and use visual aids such as mood boards and design prototypes to ensure a shared understanding of the project. Ensure that you get, ensure that your clients give you clarity on this whole thing. Ensure that uh, everything is communicated clearly. With that's why, that's why. We are working, ensure that you carry your client along. Carry them along in the work you are carrying out. Carry them along. Don't just sit there alone and be doing everything by yourself without bothering about carrying them along. No, carry your client along. It saves you of time and stress. But when they when you when they, when they are seeing the whole process, how things are going, they can tell you what is right and what is not right. You can easily do, uh, fix everything all like that. But also, let if they have if they have, if you have your your way, show them the process because it's always a means of your client appreciating uh, your efforts too. Show them the process, and everything will go on well. So another point is tight deadlines, which I've ever emphasized the other time. Some clients just like to do that on purpose. They want to just save themselves of time and energy. So what you do is that during project initiation, discuss realistic time timelines. Don't forget the word realistic. Timelines based on the scope of work. Establish milestones with agreed upon deadlines. And communicate potential challenges early if the schedule is at risk. So, this is very, very important. I've told you, don't just keep quiet and accept deadline from your client. You are the one that wanted to carry out the project. So, you have to go ahead and open up and let them know how long this work will take and what it requires so that you can, you, so you are not get stuck at the Point of you executing the work. When you have enough deadline and uh, time, 
you can know how to spread your time and carry out work excellently well. Another point is budget constraints. So, budget constraints clearly define the budget at the beginning of the project and discuss any potential cost implications of changes. Explore creative solutions within the budget constraint and offer transparent pricing for additional services. So, you have to ensure that you define the budget. Let them know that if, if there's going to be an extra review, they will, they'll be charged for, for that. You know, when you when you do that, it's it's gonna help you, it's gonna save you, save you of um argument and back and forth. So let them know that they should be well, one of the things I've seen that doing is that to keep your clients on their toes, they will be able to check the work on time and very well. Because sometimes when they feel that they can as well, they can just come to you anyhow and they're just to walk up and down, they feel that they can be doing it anyhow without any limit. When you set a limit to how much you can review the work, they will take their time very well to will take their time very well to really check the whole process and send it to them. So they will not take it with uh, with levity or they will be serious with it because they know that it costs them more if they don't take their time to check it very well. So ensure that you set the whole project thing clearly right from the beginning of time. And also, that's why don't rush into giving your clients price. That's if you don't have your, uh, if you don't have your, what's it called? Your price list, that's your risk card. Maybe the work you don't want to do is, is, is not a risk card thing. Don't rush to give them price. Make your findings. It's really like in this country that things are going up every time. The client, the, the price for printing and other things are changing. So ensure you get your price chart, your, your pricing clearly before you send them the price because it doesn't make sense that after you have given them the price, now go back to me and say you need more, or maybe you, the price has changed. It doesn't make sense. Yes, time you might be the one that would use your money to do that work. In that kind of scenario. So the next point we are going to is indecisiveness, and I will let you guys know that this is actually another big deal that I've seen in clients. So what do you do when you are faced with this? Kindly request detailed information of the project and record everything to avoid going back and forth. Relate the case of additional cost to the client in the event of in the event of excessive reviews. Yeah, I think I told you when I was talking about the problem that most times some clients have not concluded their idea. They have not concluded on their the idea they want to put forth out there. They just felt triggered. They just felt the urge to rush out and meet with the designer, only for them to realize later that they needed or they needed additional uh, information or structuring for their idea. So what this does is that don't forget the, what I told you in earlier uh, slides. That tell them that this work has um, the slots like maybe like slot of four reviews five reviews or whatever so when you have something like that intact it really helps to guide how how they approach the issue of reviews because it will help them to sit down and think about how to st structure or plan whatever they want to do rightly because the fact is this you can't keep on going back and forth when you're working you know it's not going to make sense. So when you have detailed information on the work, let your clients know that any additional review after the third review, we incur extra payment. So that will help them to sit down very well and plan their idea before they run to the designer. It's very, very essential. So indecisiveness is a big deal. Another point we have is designers' ill approach, which I think this cause we solve for you avoid ill approach to any triggering situation the ability to manage provoking statements treatment or gesture is a great level of professionalism approach with politeness and candor it's a great deal yeah, and i believe that this course will take care of this issue because 
I don't want us to be the, uh, an industry where we have arrogant designers, where we have ill-mannered designers, and we think that we are doing well because we think that our clients, our oppositions, or they are our protagonists, that we need to be fighting them here and there. No, I, want, I don't want us to build such an industry. I want us to build an industry that is mannered, that is polite, that is well-structured, where we have designers who are full of understanding, no matter how difficult the situation might be or how tough, they still calm down and treat everything well. Have you ever noticed how network providers, agents, re respond to situations? Have you ever noticed how bankers respond to situations, no matter how, how tough the, the situation is or no matter how terrible the approach of the customers might be? You see how they calm down and address the whole thing. That is how it should be in this industry because if these clients don't bring the money, we will, we will not get the money. If they don't bring job, if they don't bring this money, where would the money come from? You, get, you can't say you want to pluck money by yourself on a tree behind your house. No, it has to come from someone. It's in someone's pocket. And that person that is going to bring out the money, you need to treat the person with respect. No matter how terrible the person is or how difficult the person is, you have to ensure that you are not triggered by their words, their gestures, their their statements or their actions. You should play the professional game with them and eventually you will win their hearts and get them to do your bidding. It's just best to, to play smart with them and to play calm with them. Don't approach them with a very terrible attitude. And let me make this, this clear to you guys because I know that some clients do this very well. You know, maybe you they've not paid you completely, or you have maybe you're the type that don't even collect money before you design, which I will kick against. I will advise you that please don't operate like that. Let your policy be that you take 40% or 50% or any other percent, but let the least percentage you collect for your work be 40%. It's a commitment fee. You now, when they commit such amount of money to you, it's a, a, it's a kind of responsibility you put on them that they have to complete the whole payment for them to get their work. So when you get a part payment, it's a commitment. You, get, you don't want to lose your money because you already dropped part of the money. That's why someone like me, I advise 40, 50. Well, the people I even use 40% for is people that have been, that are recurring clients that I use 40% for. But if you're a new client, I, I, if I observed you very well, I might use 40%, but if I feel that I don't really know you more through our conversation, I've not really felt that friendship thing, I take 50%. So if you are paying 50% of whatever amount I charge you, it's a commitment. You don't want to lose your money, right? So it commits you to the work. So I would advise you guys that don't release your work. Don't even start any work without you having a part payment. Because anyone that, anybody, the person can just decide to go to another place or just do you anyhow because it does not cost the person a dime you get. So don't get into work without you getting a part payment. So what I'm trying to say is that when you get your part payment and you complete the work, don't send the original document. Don't send the original resolution of the file or to give to your client for review. Don't do that. What you do is either you send the person a, a, a lower resolution or you add watermark to the work and present to your client. You get so don't don't try and make the uh, the mistake of of going going all in to deliver the work to your clients by thinking that they would review and send you the your balance. No, it, it it's not a matter of um, maybe I trust you or I don't trust you. It's a business ethic that you need to know. It's a business ethic that you need to know. When it comes to business, you don't play the emotional game and play the trust game. That oh, I could just trust you easily. I could just Emotional, I, I, no, don't do that. Don't do that. So when you send them the, what am I, I do that for some of my clients I already trust. You know, I told you, I said I already beat some clients to the point of becoming like a family. That's the goal of this um, course that I want to get to that level where your client becomes your personal person. You, get, you already understand each other very well and you're doing well. So when you get to that point, you can do anything you like because you know that this person will definitely pay. I even have some clients that as well as just give me the work, I don't even ask them for payment before before I do the work. I just go ahead and do the work. And eventually after the either before I finish the work or after 
they pay me my money because i know that this one's already already different level of client to me so they will pay me so you know how to, that's why i told you earlier in this call and said you can't treat your clients the same way you must understand how to treat them differently you get it? so when you do that to them what either you use watermark or more than a lower resolution send it to them them to at least let them be able to see the work and observe the work very well examine it very well when you do that when you said that your work is complete if you don't have any review again you said that when they make balance payments you send work to them that was that will save you of any history because i've seen some designers crying that um after the work some of their clients just block them they block their contact from whatsapp or different areas they just block them they couldn't contact them anymore only for them to be seeing them using the work. I feel that it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing from the clients, which is not this that is a terrible case. And that is that is stealing. Okay? So you have any have all the right to sue the person or to take it to any length. But I don't think that abusing the client will be a professional way of responding to such thing. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the better way you can be about this is probably to um expose them on social media. Um, expose their deeds, even the big uh, brand, or uh, just expose them. Or you report them to an illegal um, body; they can take it off for you. As if the beef is a big deal. But I don't think abusing such people will be the best solution or professional way of handling such, because your other clients, other potential clients, might see something like that and perceive that you are arrogant, or they perceive it in a bad way. They may not uh, feel comfortable with. So you can just handle it professionally and you would eventually win. So don't approach your client anyhow as a designer. Unhealthy comparison. Solution to this, when your clients are trying to compare you to their cousin, to their to the uh, hustler on their street and all the rest, kindly establish clarity and uniqueness from the onset. Avoid any form of unhealthy comparison. Let them know that your brand policy is different from their, those people's policy. And you, you are running a business. You are not running a, a charity organization affair. You are running a business. Let that be clear to them. I believe that the way you package yourself and brand your business also will speak volume. That you will not be taken to this level anymore. When I told the story of the guy that I have issue with, I think that was when I was growing up then as a designer. Nobody approached me with this kind of thing anymore. Because I don't give that room. If you even see how I do my things, I don't give that room. It does, it, you shouldn't even come back from your mouth. It doesn't come like that. So when people try to do that to you, just let them know that you are running a business and the policy that runs in your business is different from the policy that runs in some other person's business. You might be both of you might be selling shoes or selling the same thing or doing the same thing. It doesn't mean that you operate on the same policy. And that person knows what he or she is looking for. And you know your own as well. So do not give space for the healthy comparison. You shut it off right from the onset by making uh the agreement, everything clear to them. Belittling designers' efforts and profession. Solution to this is that be of the, be at the wheel, and the drivers drive the conversation yourself. Be at the wheel and drive the conversation professionally. Speak with confidence and defend your expertise with proofs. Do not cow into intimidation. Yet when clients do, when they try to do this with you, is when they perceive that you are not professional enough. Or you have not really hold your skills very well. You have not really been. You are not really strong at what you do, or you don't know your ground. You don't understand your pricing. Uh, you don't give your price with confidence. The way you approach them will really matter in this aspect. So you need to build yourself. That's one of the reasons why I would advise that you keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. The more you learn, the more you have more confidence, because whatever you know, you be confident at it. You be confident at what you, whatever you know. You be confident at it. When when you don't know something, that's when you be shy, you be timid, you be you be rejecting because you don't have confidence on in that thing. You don't know that thing very well. But when you are sure of that thing you're doing, it builds a confidence in your on its own. That's why we advise you that keep on learning. Don't say because you've know how to draw a uh, correct draw or Photoshop, you've know how to do this and that. That's all you could do. No, keep on learning every day. Learning continues, and when you, the more you learn, the more your confidence is your confidence is built and when your confidence is built it flows through everything you do in your business and people will perceive it in you but the last point i have is difficult to communicate to design choices solution they develop develop strong communication skill 
to articulate design choices in a non-technical manner, use visual aids, comparisons, and examples to help clients understand the reasoning behind design decisions, foster a collaborative environment that encourages questions and discussions. Yeah, I've seen some clients coming with this kind of approach that, oh, I don't like this idea. I don't like. But when you now tell them the story behind the idea, it's not reason with you and I agree with you. Don't forget that these people are not professional designers. They have not been to design schools. They have not learned any design. So they might not understand your idea process at the first uh, point. So when you explain to them the reason behind the idea, the structuring, what you do in your design, it really helps them to understand you and flow with you. They might they will accept your they will accept your point of view when they are fully convinced about your explanation. So don't just conclude like that without um, taking care of them. And don't forget that the channel of communication should not be ambiguous. Don't let it be a technical one that might not be clear to your client. Make it flexible. If you're going to communicate through WhatsApp, through email, through phone calls, any channel you use, don't forget to document your calls or your chats. You could document everything and let everything you do be flexible. Don't be using difficult, ambiguous, or rigid channels to operate as a designer. And I believe that this would help you in a long way. So by implementing these solutions, graphic designers can foster better collaboration, manage client expectations effectively, and build lasting positive relationships that contribute to the success of both parties. It's gonna go to it's gonna help you. So I will advise that you go back to this crush from the beginning and go through again, especially from the solution part, go through everything again. And the earlier part when I you know, share my experiences also, I believe you will learn one or two things in this course. And if you want to uh, further your knowledge of uh, of how to interact with clients, because that's not all that we have. Those we just did now is not everything. If you want to go deeper very well and um, go more professional in your approach towards your client. And this part three is for you, client's personal person. Now, this is a course that, course that I linked with this, um, with this free masterclass I just finished. I linked this as an extension, that's extensive masterclass on this subject matter. You now, this one says client's personal person. That is, learn the magnetic pool that transforms Client into loyal enthusiasts and the magic that keeps them coming for life. This one is an extension, it's an, it's, it's an advanced um, course on this issue of client treatment or client, um, the professional way of treating your client. So now we advise you that you pick up this course and add it to what you have learned in the free masterclass because that one is, that one is packaged, it's well good, it's extensive, but this one is more extensive because it treats this one treats understanding client psychology. It treats issue of understanding client personalities. It also mastering client communication. Common challenges and solutions also came up in that place. And lastly, becoming a client magnet, which is the, 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 the head of it all. So if you can go for this course, it's very, very um, crucial to your client, to your growth. When it comes to treat how you treat your client, how you manage your client, and how you interact with clients, it's very, very crucial because if you can take care of these, I guarantee you that you will see your business skyrocketing and um, ensure of getting clients and making more money. Because when it comes to client treatment, you know, in this design industry, it's a big deal. People, the way people approach designers, the way people see designers, the way they perceive designers, and the way they treat designers, you know, it's a big deal. But I guarantee you 100% that this extended version of this uh, masterclass will help you more to be grounded and to be deeper in this issue of how to treat your clients and how to win them for life. Because I've shared my, shared my experience about my experience with the client before in the past that some clients that uh, I feel that they had when after a round of interactions and how I was able to handle them, I realized that this client become my big fans. Oh, they become my big fan for for, for life. I mean, of them are very fiery, very fiery. You know, I've seen clients, very, this one, that they refer to me 
also the effect of that person. Like just like that, just like all these social uh, networking uh, business, where someone will bring somebody, person will bring to. They are being operating like that on their own. They just bring clients to me. They just connect with my clients because why they are satisfied with how I work for them. So I would advise that you pick up this course with uh, with a token of ten thousand naira to to um, improve yourself more on how to uh, get better with your client treatment. And this course is is not uh, open to everybody. It's just fifty slot I have for this course because. I have a plan for whoever that will take up this course. I want to have a kind of a group group um, for them where I can be following up their progress. You say I want to work with them to really achieve this goal of getting more clients, not just clients, any help client, but quality clients. So I have only fifty slots for them, just fifty thousand naira, and ten thousand naira for each slot. That's for this course. And let me let me read the content again. This course takes care of understanding client psychology, understanding client personalities, mastering client communication, common challenges and solutions, extensive rationale, and becoming a client magnet, which is the deal of the whole thing. So it's 50 slot I have on ground. And this course is, is with bonus because this bonus is going to help you to have an, an action plan that will help you to start achieving something as soon as possible, you know, to start achieving this whole thing. So we have client communication toolkit that you will use to onboard your clients, to go through the process of your clients when you're working with them, and all how to follow up on all the process of your with your client and how to eventually close up the whole thing with your clients. Is everything is embedded in this client communication toolkit. Another point, another one that is your bonus is business development guide for for graphic designers. And do trust me. This particular one will help you to really guide you uh, to develop your the, uh, design skills, design business skill very, very well. It's going to help you. So it's, it's a guide that we that we put you through some things you need to do uh, when it comes to your business, which is going to even impact your output so that you can attract the clients of your dream. And the last bonus we have here is design business success strategy. These strategies are going to help you to uh, attract more clients and have more success in your design business. You get it? the first one. The first one is client communication toolkits. They, they, if you look at them, they, they link together just like um, a, a structure that I put in place after you have finished the course that will help you to really carry everything out practically and achieve it. So that's why it's like everything linked together in a structured way. The first one is communication, client communication toolkit. Next one is business development, you get it? business development guide. For designers the last one is now design business success tech strategies you know when you have good strategies on ground you can easily achieve your business goal and also attract more clients that is just it and this whole thing is just going for ten thousand error if i'm to value this bonus on its own the worth fifty thousand error on its own their own get and even more so with the group i'm going to have you guys in for for a uh, guide and mentorship and other rest like that everything we worth like hundred thousand error or i'm bringing everything down to just 10,000 Naira, and I need just 50 slots so that I can. The reason why I put these 50 slots is because so I can be able to manage everybody in a very good way. So, if you're interested in this extended version of this course, just send me a DM and just send clients, personal person, or just send clients to my DM or under this video, just type clients and I'll reach out to you on what next to do. And if there's any way, just go to the link. In, if you haven't seen this on Instagram, just go to the link in bio, on my bio on Instagram, and you see how to be about it. Or you send me a personal DM, just go to my number and send me a DM telling me what and what you want to do in this course. I, I want to guarantee you that this course will change your experience with your client forever for good. I'm telling you, I've shared my experience with you, how I lost quality clients in the past because I didn't know how to manage them. I didn't know how to handle them. And I learned in a hard way. Yes, I learned it in a hard way. But I want you guys to avoid such mistakes in your life. That's why it's good for something like this to be put out to you guys. So that by the time you learn from this, this kind of experience, you can move faster and become more successful in life. So it's going to be a good deal for you guys. 50 slots, 10,000 each for uh, each slot and it's going to close very very soon 
because I just want us to make sure that we have we have a productive group. When we have that group in a concise form, we can be more productive. They can easily follow up everybody. So don't sleep on this chance. And I would like to introduce you to other offers I have for you on the brand with business gangs brand. So this is my this is my color boss book. This book is is a gem to me. I'm also planning to have it in that copy next year by God's grace. But currently it's in e version. And this book is really like a gift from me to the design industry. It's just like a gift from me from me to the design industry. And look at the content. Um, it starts from historical historical brief, introduction to color, historical historical brief of color, who is a color boss, the color magic board, color psychology trick, color chit chat, color combo, color and marketing. This is very, very essential for whether that is into design or branding, the power of visual persuasion, why you should strive to become a color boss, legendary color bosses, color and printing palaver, the reality of your journey as a true color boss, the future of color, letter to the aspiring color boss, that's my final notes and about the book. And this book, I'm, try, I'm, I'm planning to, toward next year, to have it in course, in video course next year, but it's going to be a very expensive course because I want to ensure that if you look at the book, if you pick up the book, for instance, you will see the gem of knowledge, wealth of knowledge that's inside that book is very extensive, very extensive. And that's what I was telling you that that guy told me that the price is too cheap. It's too cheap for that price. I paid more. So the, call, the, book, the book is going for 5000 currently. And by the time I, I get to, um, I convert it to art copy next year and have it also in course, it's going to be more expensive than this. And I might even short, uh, short it for a while. So I would advise you guys to consider this book, pick it up, and you will, you will not regret doing that. So that is it. This book is like my life. And that's one of the reasons why I have a picture at the back. It's, it's a statement of my life. Um, idea to the design world about color and my experience over the years and many other uh, materials like that inside the book if you have this book with you i believe that you will do well excellently well in branding or design industry just pick it up five thousand naira only for the book and also i have another offer here why i'm bringing out all this offer for you is just for you to do your shopping and pick up the anyone that you like because if you even go for everything this 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 course, all this stuff I'm bringing to you, they are going to make you a complete designer. I'm telling you the fact, complete designer. So I have 30 days intensive design, graphic design course. This course is sort of my life course in the design world. I put my life in this course and it's a, it's a big deal for me. An extensive transformative journey into learning the course of graphic design from beginning level to a pro level this course is a bam this course is 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 wonderful like i put my whole life in this course and the course just goes for twenty five thousand euro only just twenty five thousand euro but once you have in that course is more than far more than the value uh i put there i mean the money i put on it the value is more than that this one has become a logo pro logo designer it's a, it's a logo design course where i taught extensively about how to design a logo and how to interpret elements and how to become a professional logo designer and even how to charge your logo, how to use Illustrator. I taught them inside this course and it's a loaded expo on logo design, well crafted to potentially transform your career from a novice to a pro. That is for this course. And this course, this one goes for 15,000 euro for now. 15,000 euro for now. And this one goes for 25,000 euro for now. This, I thought this design is for 25,000 euro for now. And the other one is for 15,000 naira for now. So the next one I want to introduce you to is the chief of it all, become an Odogo graphic designer. Man, this course is another level. It's another level on its own. And I guarantee you that this course is going for 50k next year. 50k next year because I want to I, I want to repackage it very well and it's going to go for 50,000 naira next year. Currently, it's sold for 35,000 naira currently. 35,000 euro. This is the quote I was talking about during the course of the pre-training that it's, it's, uh, it can comprise everything 
design business, you want to build an agency, you want to establish a business of design, you want to have your staff working with, how to choose your team, how to build your team, how to put the legal place, the legal part of your business in place, how to register everything is inside this course. A top-notch advanced and explosive course on the business of design. This is a this is a bombshell that will blow you up to the global circle. Check it out. So this course, see, this course is not something you can joke with. This become a double graph designer course. If you're really serious as a designer to go into the business of design, this course is for you. And I guarantee you that this course will change your life forever. I, talking about to brand your business. Psychological way of your business, everything about your business. But in this course, I didn't, I didn't teach anything like how to use Corel, how to use Photoshop. I didn't teach anything like a practical way of, of designing something. No, I didn't teach it here. It's purely about business of design, guys. I want to advise you that you can go, you should go for this course. It's just thirty five thousand naira for just this course. And the last one is the baby of that course, the baby of it that monetize your design design skill. A mini and simplified business of graphic design course designed to transfer your financial life as a graphic designer. This one goes for 10,000 euro. It's, it's hosted on a Telegram group. So this one is the baby of this one. So I would advise that you go for you go for this Odogo design course if you are really serious about design business. And next year, by God's grace, is going for a 50,000 euro token to assess that course. So the next one, which is my current program that I want to launch people into for next year is Money Gangs Mentorship Program. And I will take a little, a little bit of time on this one. Money Gangs Mentorship Program. And this is what I want to focus more on next year. I want to raise an army of designers who are not just designers, but who are making waves in the industry. My mistakes in the past, my my all my failures, I want to say I want to Teach them how to avoid those things and begin to make sense in life. So, Money Gang's mentorship program has a 30 day ex exclusive designers accelerator program that will launch you from zero to hero. And this mentorship program is just 10 slots, just for 10 people. I want to ensure that. Um, we ha we have a concise number of people in this program so that we can be able to measure progress and um, control um, their field, the whole program easily because the goal is this. The goal is to see people achieving their goals in this industry. And as much as we can, also, we empower them with um, weekly programs that we'll be doing in this program. As, and as time goes on, I'm going to be bringing in people who can empower them in one way or the other. It's just going to be, it's going to be a kind of collaborative effort to empower people and bring experts on board to see how we can develop these people very well. And get them to achieve their dream life. It's going to be a very powerful uh, mentorship program. And if I'm to go for this program, like mentorship one on one, is is a very expensive thing that uh, I do. But if you're going to be really for this program, which is for ten people, just ten people, I want to work with these ten people to better their career and empower them more and more. This is going to be away from just the normal design thing. It's going to be more than that. More than that. Just like we working together one on one to achieve your goal, to achieve your dream life. That is what this is basically for mentorship program. But it's an exclusive mentorship program. And if you're going to be joining this program, we are going to be having. The area of focus in three parts. Exclusive mentorship itself, where I'm going to be guiding you through everything you want to achieve. PA holding you by the hand and showing you how things work in the industry and how you can connect and make life big for yourself. And the second thing we'll be looking at is strategies for client acquisition. 
how you can how you can attract clients, how you can monetize them to to um patronize you and to make life for yourself, how you can attract quality clients, what strategies like that will be given to you in this program. And the last point in this program is the business branding and strategy. The last part of this is business branding and strategy. Now, in this aspect, we'll be diving into how you can take your career in design further from just being a designer to become someone who owns and controls his own, uh, own business in branding and strategy because you're going to be taking your eyes away from just designing and opening your eyes to the real thing that works in the industry. So these are the three core areas we'll be focusing on in this uh, program. And see, let me make something clear to you guys when I want to join this program. This program is basically for serious people, people who are ready to work. Because this is just me and you guys working one-on-one -on -one to guide you to achieve something. Because I've seen some people in the past that you want to pick by the hand to help. But you'll be the one following them up and down to get them to work. And some of them will not be serious. So I don't want it to be like that. I want this to be a program that you will put in your whole best and make sure that you have something tangible achieved in this industry. So it's just exclusive mentorship strategies for client acquisition and brand, uh, business branding and strategy. Then that's not all about this. That's not all. There are some bonuses that we add to it. Now you're going to be having access, free access to my Pro Logo Designer course, Pro Logo Designer course that teach about A to Z about logo design how you can create a logo, how you can um, ideate and all the rest you need to know about logo. And this course currently is sold for 15,000 Naira. So you're going to be getting that one for free. That's free access to that um, logo course. Because it's going to help you in this um, journey. Because it's one of the things I will be teaching. Because if you're talking about branding, you can't leave out logo and some other aspect of branding in it. Another one you also have access to, which is free access, is Color Buzz ebook. And you are aware of my current ebook that is still in sale, and that is Color Buzz. And currently, it's sold for 5,000 Naira. You're going to be having free access to that. I'm going to be giving you for free this time because you are enrolling for this course. Because everything I'm packing together in, as bonus in this uh, mentorship program is things that will help you to achieve. You know, if you look at them, they are all connected. Things that will help you to achieve results because the goal is to get results, to make, to get get evident results that will change your career for good, for better. So you're going to be having access to Color e Color Boss ebook, and also another thing you're going to be having access to is consultation booking, and this is supposed to cost you hundred thousand naira for us to have uh, hours of consultation. It's supposed to cost you hundred thousand naira, but because you're really for this program we're going to be getting it for free that's for this um mentorship program so that means if you're calculating these three bonuses together you're going to be having 100 plus 15 that's one twenty thousand error and if you're going to bring out these three together to you know what this value would mean exclusive mentorship which is going to be like hundred thousand error upward uh, strategies for client acquisition when you be learning that that's like twenty thousand naira. building branding and this um business branding and strategy i currently have a course on that which is thirty five thousand naira. so if you are adding everything together everything is getting close to two hundred thousand naira, and that's not all so if you are if you are going to be be uh, joining this first batch because we are going to be having them in batches so this one i'm talking about right now is the first batch you're going to be having, I've been joining this first batch. You're going to be having additional bonuses for the first batch alone. You're going to be joining the first batch, which is going to be closing very, very soon. It's going to be for this. These bonuses you are going to be having in this part. We are, together with the one I showed you in the previous slide, this one, together with this one, you're going to be having access to everything. 
and this one is client communication to click two keys which is valued at 5000 naira this is going to show you how to onboard your client how to take them through the process of your uh, contract or the, the project you are working on they are to get review and all the rest we are in these two kits not only that we're going to also be having access to business development guide for gra graphic designers which is worth 10,000 naira and lastly in this aspect we're going to be having access to design business success strategies as 20,000 naira in value now if you bring all these things together now if you calculate everything together as i have them listed out here everything goes for two or at 10,000 naira without me placing value on these. Everything will go toward two or at 10,000 naira. If you add everything together, it will be heavier. Now, if we are to be paying for this program, you're going to be charged two or at 10,000 naira. But I don't want to make it that way because I want people, as many people as uh, join this program, I want as many people as possible to have access. Because of the result that is uh, that is embedded in this program, so instead of twenty two or ten thousand naira now, I'm going to be slashing it down from two ten thousand naira to eighty thousand naira. That's the price for this program, eighty thousand naira, and it's going to last for thirty days. But another thing I want to do for you guys is that because I'm trying to be so considerate about this, and uh, that's the reason why. Um, trying to slash so this is actually the price for this program eighty thousand naira. but if you are going to be taking action very very fast for this first batch you are only going to pay fifty thousand naira. that's what we have here for the first batch only fifty thousand naira. and i guarantee you that this price is just for the first batch and the reason why this price is made is on this uh, program is because of the value Because of the value you have in there, imagine you having access to all these items, everything here, exclusive mentorship program where I'll be working with you one on one for the next 30 days. And don't forget, let, let me make something clear to you guys. The 30 days we have there is not only when we have access to each other alone. The 30 days is just for us to put in the whole work, the, the whole required work at that first point, first month. That's, so after that 30 days, we have continuous access to ourselves, but it's just that this time around, it's not going to be like what we'll be doing in the first 30 days. Okay? This one just going to be about how you can now begin to get feedback, go and come back, you know, just like guiding you, monitoring you. You have access to me for a long time. But these 30 days is just the first part that you need to put the required work in place. So the 30 days is just for the time required for the first part of the whole thing that need to put it to the foundational level where you not start building, but it doesn't mean that you know every way we end there. You have continuous access to guide and to uh, put you through one or two things thereafter, but the program is meant for 30 days. So you have also strategies for client acquisition. Also, business branding and strategy. You have access to pro logo design brand course, which is fifteen thousand naira. Color boards ebook five thousand naira. Consultation booking that's hundred thousand naira. Client communication two k that's five thousand naira. Business development guide for graphic designers ten thousand naira. Design business success strategies twenty k. So everything put together. We tour at ten thousand naira. But instead of you to be paying that, so you're going to be paying just fifty thousand naira. And this is a limited um slot. This is a limited slot for you to take it. Ten slot only. I want to have a few people to just work with and to um have um massive results in everything you want to do. And but this the one I'm sending to you guys. The one is that it requires work. It requires someone who can put in the work because for you to get the result you desire, it must be the place of work that needs to be put in place. And I wouldn't tolerate that after taking on something like this, we just 
everything just be about um, laziness or, or seriousness. No. So it requires someone that can put in the work and work to make sure things work out for you know her. So that's just that's just about the program. It's just fifty thousand naira for thirty days for the first batch. That means second batch is been for eighty thousand naira. So the opportunity you have now to save that massive difference is is a good thing. You can pop in and put just send me a DM. Any of the any of the offers I put here that you have interest in, just send me a DM on zero eight zero six one five zero three nine zero eight. And let's get started. And if you're watching this on Instagram, just send me a DM. Or you go to my bio to click the link there to access um, anything you want to access. So that is just about that. So it's uh, it's a massive program for people to grow, especially for the following year. That's Money Gang's mentorship program. And I promise you that it's going to be an experience that you never forget in your life. I will change you massively because I did the same something like this some years ago. Invested into a course and everything changed everything for me, changed the game for me. So I'm trying to get you guys on board to also be part of this testimony of having changing massive change in your career and putting in for this. So fifty thousand euro is talking of fifty thousand euro for investment, and just like commit, commitment fee for this program and let's get on board to put this together. So deciding and acting fast is the ultimate game changer. What are you waiting for? I used to thinking, contemplating about if you should take on of this or not. But the fact is that if you are to think about this, say for instance, or think well, in the time past, you have been trying to overthink about if you should take an action or not. Look at how what you have lost, what you have missed not by not taking action. Look at what you have lost. Look at what you have missed and think about now that you have another opportunity before you to um, get your career in, uh, in a good line why can't you just rise now to take action and see how it to work for you and let's let's see how you work things out so i remain Simeon michael get that so here i'm concerned about your growth and your success as a designer i will be seeing you on the other side Take care. Bye-bye.